Sunday, February 7th, 1993. Howard W. Hunter, President of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles and later President of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, arrives on BYU campus to give a fireside talk at the Marriott Center. Just as President Hunter begins to speak, a man rushes the stage carrying a briefcase and what appeared to be a bomb's detonator. It is a wonderful privilege for me to be with all the students. Everybody up now. We've got 10 seconds before we go out. Here's the time, mate. Let's go. Ten seconds to clear the stage or he sets off the dynamite in his briefcase. That's what the man by the name of Cody Robert Judy said he'd do. There were only two BYU police officers on duty at the event. 18,000 audience members watched in silenced fear and confusion as Judy handed President Hunter a piece of paper, demanding that he read it aloud over the pulpit, a document that would release the leadership of the church and confirm Judy as its new prophet, warning Hunter to not goof this up or there will be a lot of people killed. Hunter hardly acknowledged the man and simply refused his request. Nobody in the audience had any idea whether this was a part of the event or not, until an old man attempted to approach the pair and was shoved to the ground by Judy. Most of the audience stood still. Some people cried, some yelled, some were praying. All eyes were fixed to the podium. A song slowly rose from the crowd until everyone in attendance was singing together the words, We thank thee, O God, for a prophet, as well as I am a child of God. A man then ran to the stage and sprayed Judy with mace before bringing President Hunter to the ground, yelling, I'm ROTC, and I'm not getting off until you're safe. A hundred students followed after him, dogpiling the perpetrator, beating Judy almost to death until the security officers were able to wrangle the mob and place Judy in custody, rushing him to the hospital. President Hunter proceeded to give his talk, seemingly unfazed by the ordeal. Judy would then go on to escape custody on March 23rd by jumping out of a third-story hospital window, evading police until he suddenly appeared at the KSL broadcast house in Salt Lake three days later, supposing that he'd be granted the opportunity to give a statement to the news. And he would, once in jail. Judy said he spent those three days in the mountains talking to God. I mean no harm to anyone, I am just doing exactly what the Lord has commanded me. It turned out that Cody Judy's dynamite case was full of nothing but a set of scriptures and a radio. His detonator was a phone receiver wrapped in tape. He claimed God's will was for Judy to become the next prophet and reinstate plural marriage and rescind the word of wisdom's ban on coffee, alcohol, and tobacco. I had no ill intent. The only dynamite I had was the scriptures. The so-called detonator was only a toy. I had my arm around President Hunter telling him everything would be okay. About the Fireside's audience, he said, If they would have faith, they would not have feared. It was a warning to the saints for their own good. Judy also apparently mistook the audience's singing of We Thank Thee, O God, for a Prophet as them commending him as the church's new leader. Cody Robert Judy is from Bakersfield, California. Two years prior to this incident, Judy's wife left him and took his three children with her. Shortly thereafter, Cody began having heavenly visions and visitations accompanied by severe poverty. Judy claims he went from an upper-income family man to a bum living in his car with $5 in his pocket. Three weeks before he threatened to blow up his captive audience, Judy drove to Utah in order to take over the LDS church and bring its members to repentance. He apparently tried to make contact with church leaders at Temple Square, but in his words, was treated rudely and thought to himself, if you treat me rudely, I'll treat you rudely leading to his haphazardly planned coup d'etat. Judy was convicted of aggravated burglary of all things and sentenced to up to 15 years in prison. He served six before he was paroled and then re-imprisoned shortly thereafter when he tried to visit his ex-wife and children, violating a protective order. He was incarcerated for two more years and then finally set free. To anybody who is scared out there, I would like to tell them I'm sorry and that this won't happen again, for sure. Cody's been busy since his release from prison in 2001. While in prison, Judy graduated from Utah State University with a degree in psychology with a minor in sociology. In 2008, he ran for president. Then in 2012, he ran for president. And then in 2016, he, well, he ran for president. In 2018, Judy ran for 
U.S. Senate. So far, his political aspirations have not been realized. Oh, and uh, Mr. Judy runs a blog, wherein he writes about conservative politics. I would describe his writing style as boldly incoherent. In 2015, he wrote about his frustrations regarding the LDS Church and society at large when it comes to their depiction of him as some kind of psycho, describing his treatment as a hate crime. You see, when you Google Mr. Judy's name, you get all sorts of articles talking about a bomb threat, which I guess, understandably, is fairly upsetting to Mr. Judy. These snapshots illustrate in the story my testimony that God had told me what to do, what to say, and who to say it to. The harm upon our society is labeling this as a psychotic action is what? No one can say in God we trust anymore. No one can say God told me. And it's a direct violation of our God-given rights and freedom. God gave us our freedoms. Many times in our Declaration of Independence, as well as our Constitution, is God referred to. What gives anyone the right to say, God didn't tell me, and then take away my freedoms and liberties and imprison me for it? No one has that right, and it's a basic right of our inalienable rights. You can certainly tell me to shut up. But it's the penalty that was attached to it that makes it an infringement of my rights based on my religion. Did anyone else go to prison? Was anyone else charged? No. So, what we have here is two religious If interpretations you'd like to support Cody own. Robert Judy and his political career, you can read his blog, codyjudy.blogspot.com. Or you can follow him on Twitter. Though it seems like he hasn't been active for a while. Unfortunately. So, what did we learn? Well, I suppose BYU has learned to better staff their security. Yeah, this is kind of a funny story and kind of an interesting footnote in LDS history, but really at its core we see a sick man who is probably deserving of our prayers. Amen. Bye-bye now.